G'day. Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a Happy New Year. Um, the place behind me probably doesn't need an introduction. But one of the surprises when you come as a visitor to Rio is, is that the locals don't actually call it Rio, they call it Rio because the rules of Portuguese orthography mean that an, an R is pronounced um, like an H sound, so it's actually Rio de Janeiro. Interestingly also, another little tidbit, it was called Rio because when it was discovered they thought that the Guanabara Bay was the mouth of an enormous river, which, which um, the discovery happened in January, so it got called River of January. And so now, as a result, that the most famous Rio in the world that all the world knows isn't even on a river. It was, they were actually wrong. It's just an enormous um, coastal bay with no river, you know, no major river draining into it at all. It's taken me a bit of a while, while to get a handle on the rules of Portuguese orthography and how you pronounce words because um, it's it's a bit complex. I mean. It's, it's not the dog's breakfast that English is, but at the same time it's not the, the simple um, system that, that Spanish has. There's a lot of uh, rules about um, context of how, how a letter gets pronounced, depending on what letters are around it and, and so on. And so it takes, it takes a while to get a handle on all the, all the, um, the, the changes. I mean, as an example, um, the way that it pr processes foreign words is, is illustrative. Uh, you can see around all around Rio there'll be these little sandwich bars and they have like hamburgers and, and one of the they'll have egg cheeseburgers and you'll see egg will be written on the menu in, in the English way so they've just adopted the, the English word holus bolus but in Portuguese if a word has ends in a consonant that, that doesn't work well with the, the linguistic system so egg becomes eggy and by similar, similar logic internet would become internet -y. But then there's a further level of elaboration in that in Portuguese, if you have a T or a D sound and it's followed by an E sound, then it becomes what's called palatalized. So the internet becomes internetchi. Or um, the city, for example, is not Rio de Janeiro, it's Rio G Janeiro. Um, palatalization is not uh, unique to Portuguese. It's, it's common in a lot of languages. Um, when I was growing up as a kid in, in rural New South Wales, before I went to my uh, Toffee Nose boarding school and got told how to pronounce words correctly. Uh, we used to pronounce um, "dew" as a as a synonym, as a homonym of, of "Jew," or "Tuesday" would be "Tuesday." So it happens in Australian English as well, albeit in a much more limited range of environments. One of the um, other examples that are, that. Uh, surprise me is that when I first came here and people would ask me where I'm from in Portuguese or even in English if I said Australia you know that's that's recognizable enough you know Australia Australia but when I said Sydney I'd get blank stares and you know civic pride would well up and I think how could they not know about Sydney I mean it's it's the most famous city in Australia for a start and it's it's known worldwide so so it seemed bizarre that it, that it didn't know what I was talking about but now I've come to realise that it was, I was actually pronouncing it wrongly because in Portuguese uh, consonant clusters where you have two consonants next to each other don't work so they tend to insert a vowel in between them so Sydney would become Sydney you know as in the famous pronouncement for the Olympic Games you know the winner is Sydney um, was for the same sort of reason but then in Brazilian Portuguese because a D followed by an E sound gets palatalised then it becomes Sydney so once I started telling people I was from Sydney, then everyone straight away knows what I'm talking about, which is kind of odd, having to learn how to pronounce your hometown. But anyway, if you want to communicate. Um, the city is, is laid out behind me, Rio. Um, you, you can see on the, on the left there's uh, Corcovado with the statue of Cristo Redentor, the Christ the Redeemer. Um, I've also, also, also got it on my, I've got this singlet that I got from New Year's, I mean one of the traditions for New Year's is that you wear white and I, I traditionally hate wearing white because I reckon it makes, you know, being ginger it makes me look a bit pink so, but I thought, you know, go with it and, and I, so I got the, um, the Christ 
single out as a souvenir and it seemed appropriate to wear for climbing up on, you know, above the city. The, the beach that you can see in the, in the distance to the right um, is Ipanema and behind that, sort of further, sort of in the middle view is Copacabana, which is where I've been staying and, and where the New Year's Eve fireworks have been, were held. The other thing you notice about Rio is it's, it's a real mix of different neighbourhoods. I mean, in the foreground is one of the, the biggest slums or favelas of Rocinha, whereas uh, behind, you know, in Copacabana you can see all the high-rise and, and, and the poor areas and the, and the rich areas are sort of slammed up right against each other. So there's a profound um, gulf of social inequality, which is, it affects, you know, everything, most, most obviously security in the city, and I've been advised many times you know, to be to be wary of you know what I take when I go out on the street, and indeed when I arrived and I was had my backpack um, running down the street, there was a, a shoplifter ran out of a, a a shop on on the street, and he was being chased by security guards, and shots were fired in the air, and I thought, oh, you know, I was I was prepared for Rio to be to be scary, but day one was a bit you know. My nerves were a bit rattled, so uh, once I got my apartment, I just hung out there for a little while just to, just to chill. I've been a bit slack up till now. I don't feel too guilty about it because the weather's been overcast. This is actually the first clear day, since, you know, fully clear day since I've been here. But I thought I can't spend the entire time in, in Rio sitting around doing nothing and just eating hamburgers and stuff, so I thought I should take the opportunity to take advantage of the kick-ass scenery that Rio has. I mean, there's no other city quite like it, where the, the city is just so nestled up and surrounding its mountains, and there's, there's tunnels going through the mountains to get from one part of the city to the other, and everywhere you turn there's these like, massive cliff faces covered in jungle greenery above you. I mean, it's, it's just staggeringly beautiful. Um, from a distance. I mean, up close, all those apartment blocks are pretty dingy and, you know, un, unprepossessing. But, um, you know, when you take an appropriate sort of distance, the, the place looks fucking gorgeous. And, you know, I've been, enjoyed hanging out here. I got cut off there and I, I hate doing second takes, so I'll just pick up where I left off. Um, the forest itself has an interesting story. The, the mountains of, of Rio, um, they're described as one of the largest urban forests whatever that, in the world, whatever that means. But anyway, the, the National Park, Chizuzhka National Park, has an interesting story in that apparently in the 19th century it was completely deforested and they found they had such severe problems with water quality and also with drought because um, obviously forests perform a vital function in regulating uh, flow of water throughout the year that by um, presidential decree they um, s removed a lot of people from the mountains and reforested them. I'm sure the actual story is a lot more complex than that. I mean it's, it's kind of hard to believe that every single tree was gone. There's probably little patches of forest left here and there. But you can certainly see the legacy. I mean, I'm, down in the lower slopes when entering the forest, uh, there's jackfruit trees everywhere. And when I was working in North Queensland in horticulture, I was never able to get you know any straight final answer on whether jackfruit is from India or from Southeast Asia originally, but it's certainly not from Brazil. And yet the forest down there is just chock full of them, which is a, a leftover legacy of, of a time when uh, it was essentially gardens. I mean, nowadays, nowadays no one even seems to be harvesting them, which, which always strikes me as odd. Um, I'll be spending a few more days in Rio. Uh, I was thinking of probably out of shot, but, but um, at Pedro Benito there's a famous place where you can do hang gliding, you know, one of those sort of tandem arrangements. But, and climbing up here on the mountain, my fear of heights is returning a bit and my heart's in my mouth at the moment so I guess it'll depend on how I feel when I get down on ground again. I mean if I thought that Pedro Benito was crazy 
there were people actually base jumping from this very spot uh, an hour or so ago. I was taking photos over from the from the other peak and then just heard this scream and you know saw one of them jump off. And I, I got some photos of, of some of the parachute base jumpers. And then after that, I just heard this this sort of weird cutting sound, like a swift or something flying through the air. And it was those guys with those those wing suits on, you know, a red and blue one, just sitting down and just undid the chute just above the beach. And I thought, man, Mum thinks I'm crazy and adventurous, but God, there's this there's young men who are way more out there than I ever was or ever was. I mean, hats off to them. Must be an amazing rush, but there's no way in hell I could ever be brave enough to do that. So, got a weekend to look forward to, and then on Tuesday I'll be heading to Manaus in the Amazon and to meet up with my mate Adam, who's doing some research up there on... Well, last time I talked to him it was going to be on poison arrow frogs, but the story might have changed. Uh, so, yeah, Adam... If you're watching this or on Farah, make sure he has a look. I am looking forward to catching up with you. That'll be great. And everyone else, see you next time.